From Isolation Studios, it's Richard Krauss. Welcome to In Isolation With. It's the talk show where we make a connection without actually making contact. I hope you're well. I hope you're practicing social distancing just as we are, washing your hands, not touching your face. Uh, most of all, staying in and staying healthy. That's the important thing right now. If you've been watching In Isolation With, thank you very much. If you haven't, check us out on YouTube or you can find out all the details that you need to know about the show at richardkraus.ca. Uh, we've been lucky to have some great guests so far. Today is no different. In December, I found a really cool little horror film that I kind of fell in love with. It's the story of an immortal hunter. She is a killing machine, but she still has a big slice of humanity in her soul. It's a really cool film. It is called She Never Died. And today we're lucky enough to have the director and star of the film, Audrey Cummings and Olunika Adelii here to talk about the movie and how they're faring during the pandemic. Before we get to that, though, I wanted to give a big shout out to the Sobe Art Foundation and the National Gallery of Canada. Now, every year they give out an award of big money to an artist under 40 who has distinguished themselves this year with so many artists suffering during the pandemic. They've thought out of the box. They have redesigned how they do things and they're giving $25,000 each to five artists from each of the five regions of the country. It's a fantastic thing when you have seen your exhibitions disappear. No one's buying art right now. Uh, it would be a life-changing amount of money. And I think that the Sobe Art Foundation and the National Gallery deserve a big shout out for redesigning and rethinking the way that they do business. Well, let's get to the main event. We'll tell you all about She Never Died in the interview, but first, have a look. Robot, no. zombie, no. vampire. I'm not a vampire. You sound like a vampire. Yeah, how are you doing, Audrey? You know what? I'm doing really well. Mm. I actually got a Peloton bike. Um, What's that? Oh, it's amazing. It's a it's this bike that comes with like a screen on the front and these oh. classes that you're like um it's just spin spin classes that you can join join up every day. So you can you can see a teacher or they have these things where they took a camera through all these really cool countries. So oh, you can like, wow. Bike rides through the countryside, dance classes, yoga. It's amazing. I love it. That's that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but, but how many hours a day can you spend on that bike? Yeah, right. uh, 45 minutes max. <laughs> yeah. That's it? They give you a time limit? No, or, no. Or because that's how long the video lasts. No, baby, that's how long my endurance lasts. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. And, uh, Olenike, how's it going for you? Um, I mean, it's... I mean, it's great, you know, I'm lucky to be quarantined uh, with my husband who happens to be a chef. So I think that life is good. <laughs> and, and how's it working out for him? Is he still working, uh, going into work and doing takeout at his restaurant or? No, 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 no. we are both home. We are home. Yeah, we are both home. So it's, I'm, I'm, I get all the spoiling. I'm, I'm really spoiled. <laughs> love it like I'm really spoiled like this morning and like he already even he woke me up when I needed to wake up to for this interview but even before that he breakfasts in bed every morning that's that's his deal wow uh, you can get used to that I am used to it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like I was like okay yeah it's it's scary going outside and that whole you know, and it's, I, I stopped watching the news and there's no way I don't want to, I don't want to see all that. Um, but it does, I mean, being at home with the people that you love makes a huge difference. It really does. And Audrey, are you going outside at all? I am. I actually just came back from grocery shopping not very long ago. <laughs> That's and cool. Half an hour ago. How, how are you feeling about it? I mean, I've talked to a, a, a number of people. I have gone grocery so shopping and I've gone to the liquor store and I've done that sort of thing. But I'm really aware that if I pick something up, I have to buy it because I've touched it. I, I'm looking around and seeing well, how other people are behaving. Are, did that go through your mind at all? It does all the time. And the thing that irks me the most, though, is when you go through the produce aisle because people are so used to picking up 
something, feeling it, they don't like how it looks or feels and they put it back. And then you're just like, okay, how many people have picked this up and put it back, you know? So I do think about that too, but I've got my Purell and I've got all my, like a spray that I spray the bags when I get home. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we 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 um clean everything once it comes into the house. Yeah. Yeah, like we 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 use cleaner on bottles or any kind of containers and any kind of vegetables we soak in vinegar water. Oh. Huh? See, I've not heard that because we've been doing the same thing around here. It's just my wife and I here at Isolation Studios. And if we order things in or if we do go to the grocery store, uh, we bring everything home and wash it. And yesterday, mm -hmm. Possibly for the first time ever in my life, I said, "Honey, are, did you dry the bananas yet?" Which because we we washed the bananas. Yeah, isn't that weird? It's like that's so weird. Like we're washing bananas, but yeah, that's the deal. Like you know, you soak them and yeah. But I mean, it's it's like you always have a fresh fridge. Right, right, and so vinegar water. I've not heard that. Vinegar. Well, my mom told me to do that. Yeah, my mom and my aunt usually did that anyway. Really? Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So they're like, just make sure you wash everything, and you know, when that's fine. And then, yeah, it's been, it's been it's so weird. This is such a weird time, right? <laughs> it's so weird. Well, we took so many things for granted. Well, yeah. I think that's one of the things that's going to come out of this because I always hope that if something catastrophic happens whether uh you know it's with your health or whatever it might be in this case the pandemic i always hope that we can take something away from it that we can learn yeah. from it when all this is said and done otherwise sitting inside for a month or two months or three months or whatever it's going to turn out to be uh is all for nothing so i hope that it's that we learn how to not take everything for granted that we learn that we are all part of this interconnected community because mm -hmm. uh you know this disease if nothing else is teaching us how connected we all really are yeah it's certain that is a hundred percent right you're absolutely right if, if you don't i don't know if you don't come out of this learning something when it has to come to gratitude then i mean whatever happens to you I, i'm not even going to feel bad anymore <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean it's like I'm I'm totally in lacy mode that way, you know, in, in that mindset of like, well, you know, you you're a piece of crap. So <laughs> you should de you shouldn't deserve to live among the rest of us who actually learned something. So we'll talk more about lacy in just a sec. But honestly, yeah. when you're not on your Peloton bike, uh, how are you passing? Are you binging anything? Have you seen anything great that you want to tell people about? Well, yeah. I I'm finishing the last season of the last season of Homeland. Mm. It's so good. Oh my God. Really? Oh, so good. I can't even believe it. Every season is so good. I've never watched Wow. It. What? I know. I know. I know. Uh, but sometimes, uh, and maybe this is the same for, for both of you, when people tell you something's so good, you're like, no, I'll find it, you know, I'll, I'll get to it. And then the next time you, you look, there's uh, 10 seasons and there's 150 shows to watch. And you're like, it's too much. I can't. But now, right. Yeah. That's exactly what I just thought right now. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's been around for so long. Ah, oh, man, I know there's a few seasons, but. Big question. Have you well, but this is a good time, though. Uh, Have we went? Tiger King? Oh, I saw that crap. I've, I've, I've watched Tiger King. And I was very compelled by it. I mean, it, it to me uh, was so timely because it's about narcissism. It's about egos run out of control. Oh. It is about, and if you you know, it's it's not too many steps away from seeing how certain leaders in the world are leading things right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 to me, was very compelling. I've talked to people, though, who absolutely couldn't get through it, even one or two episodes. Yeah, I found it to be, um, I was very uncomfortable because it reminded me of slavery and when there used to be human zoos. Right. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so it was very uncomfortable to watch. I was like, oh my gosh, this is not, this is not good. These animals, like, this is not good. Yeah, it's sad. It is. And the fact that when they said there's more tigers in America than there is in the wild, I went, oh, my Lord. I know. 
and most of them are in these these they're not i guess they're not they're officially sanctioned zoos i guess but they're not a zoo like we would think of the toronto zoo or the san diego zoo or something right. like that. They're, it's a much different thing there's a lot more cages for one thing in these places yeah it's it's pretty sickening so but I, and it's like it's comical but also eerie you know so i was like mm, no this was i was like nope but i was like darn i started to have to get through it but like yes i definitely i'm almost finished netflix <laughs> i'm almost finished netflix but i think that there probably is an end the, the screen just goes blank and your television blows up you know what i'm saying like because wow i've watched a lot of stuff audrey the first time that you saw et you were fully taken in by it. What was it about that movie that that was so magical for you and that I'm guessing sort of pushed you along uh, to becoming a filmmaker yourself? Well, I think um, it was just the, uh, this, this idea, it opened up, I guess, my eyes to like another world and, and more life out there and mm -hmm. the prospect of just, I don't know, science fiction worlds and, and just different, I don't know, just being able to create new worlds, I guess um that's what i really gravitated to um that and how cute the little alien was but <laughs> when you watch it today though he really just does look like a rubber puppet but i know it's his eyes or something that draws you in yeah it's yeah eyes. he's just yeah they're, they somehow you're getting all the expression out of them like that you i don't know i don't know i just i felt really connected to him i cried through the movie i probably would still cry through the movie like it's very touching and mm. um, yeah it it just got me and Olivia, you were sort of pushed along your path a little bit and i love this story so much and i want to hear about it you were an extra on the set of denzel washington's movie john q and right he pulled you aside and said you got to go to acting school yeah well, what you... happened how does denzel i don't know I think maybe, I don't know what it is about me, but people are maybe, he was drawn to me, I guess. People are usually. And um, he, I, I think he saw me just watching everything very intently. You know, I, I really did care about what was going on. So I think he saw that. And so he pulled me aside. And, and it was not just once. It was like a few, it was a lunch times, you know. That's, that's when we just would sit and talk and... He said, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I want to sing, dance, and act. And he said, whoa, just chill. <laughs> do one thing great and then bring the others along. And then, yeah, and then he told me to go to school. It would be great if I, want, if I really wanted to be an actress. And that would be the, the right route. And what was that moment like the first time that he took you aside? Because it's Denzel Washington. I, mean, I know. You know, I, I've met him a couple of times. I saw him on Broadway on uh, Iceman Cometh, doing Iceman Cometh. A I did too. I saw Iceman Cometh. Four and a half hours of 1940s socialism goes by like that when Denzel wow. is on the stage. <laughs> Uh, but he's so charismatic, and he's you know he's a movie star. He's he's one of the biggest movie stars going, and he's taking you aside. Was your mind blown, or were you kind of like, yeah, no, I'm cool with all this? No, I wasn't cool at all. I was blown. <laughs> I was like, whoa, you know. But like he he did put me at ease too, though. Like it's you know because uh, you you hear a lot of stories too. You also hear a lot of stories that oh my gosh, he's difficult. He's this or don't look him in the eye just dumb stuff that like kind of build up the anxiety and then when I finally I did actually meet him and speak with him and it was in such a different manner than people just gawking or whatnot right it's just two people having a conversation a real conversation of passing down information from one generation to the next and so I was honored I would, I would say um the the the, the scared part just kind of drifted away once I realized what was happening the tutelage that I was getting so yeah I was pretty honored well, he probably pretty felt that energy on set and you probably had the same energy then as you still do now like Olanuke on set oh. is incredible no <laughs> ego pure a pure joy like she will she'll sit there and like rip someone's head off in a fight scene and then start like when I yell cut she'll be like twerking like I'll be twerking over to the <laughs> side to the but you just have such a this beautiful aura about you on set that people are just drawn to you because you're so i don't know just this 
this ball of sunshine. Like uh, that's probably, you were probably the same way then. That's probably why you said go act. <laughs> Thank you. You're so sunshine. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> because I love this movie when it came out theatrically. It is now on VOD, so you can find it wherever you find your movies and you're downloading legally and paying for them. Twelve missing people in the last two months. Now half a dozen dismembered bodies, their fingers conspicuously absent. Following me? Yeah, I killed that guy. Oh, wow. Why? I wanted to eat him. What? Well, parts of him. Parts of him. You didn't write this. You co-wrote, right? Um, no. Um, Jason Krawcheck, who wrote He Never Died, they were mm -hmm. planning on doing He Never Died 2 with it. Ooh, right. And then Henry ended up getting swept away into TV world. Henry Rollins, who was the yeah. star of, the, of He Never Died. Yeah. Correct. And, uh, and so then they decided, well, let's pivot. Jason wrote such a big world. Let's show another fallen angel and show her story. And so then we moved on to, you know, she never died and then they brought me on. Um, yeah. And there's a yeah. number of, of changes because that the original is a cult favorite, but uh, Roland's character is immortal, like Lacey, the, the character that you play. Uh, mm -hmm. Like Roland's character, she cares about people. Yes. Not all people, but, but a lot of people. And I think that changes the vibe of the entire film. Was that important, Audrey, to you uh, oh, as a yeah. filmmaker? That was one of the things that for me, I felt is like, I felt that this, that Lacey needed to be able to feel pain, vulnerability, sadness, happiness. Like, I just think that those are, those are traits in a character when you're watching a movie that really draws you in, makes you care for them, makes you love them. Um, and it's part, and it just, it allows the, the character to have an arc as well, which she has a beautiful arc in here. She's this very closed off character who's, who's fighting not joining society because she's in sort of a world she doesn't really belong to. So she's fighting not joining society. And then, you know, unwittingly she ends up with this group of, there's this sort of motley crew of them all kind of working with her, <laughs> um, right. which I just love. I just love it. But yeah, it was super important. And Olenuke, who's able to go from, you know, tough and strong to, to vulnerable in like, just seamlessly, we just opened it up in every scene and just allowed her to just to go with it, you know, go with what you, you know, how you're feeling in the moment. And she, mm -hmm. every cake was gold. <laughs> <laughs> should go. Do you think it takes some time to realize you've done the worst thing in your life? Okay, I've got a quote from you where you say, I try to pick my roles with an eye for difference. Yes. And, uh, what drew you then to the role of Lacey? Certainly a very different kind of character, uh, but what was it exactly? Because uh, she doesn't have a lot of dialogue. Uh, there was a right. lot of action. You got to poke your finger in people's eyes. You got to do all that kind of stuff. Tell me what appealed to you. Um, well, first of all, like, I, I did it even without knowing what it was because it was Audrey. Aww. You, you know, because um, she's like, I got a role for you. And I was like, okay, just work it out and no problem. <laughs> didn't even, I didn't even know the gist of it. You know, yeah, I, I said yes before I really knew the story. Wow. <laughs> right, because I trust her that much. Yeah. Um, secondly, I love roles that have very little dialogue. <laughs> I'm not a dialogue hungry actor. In fact, I have tried to avoid as much dialogue. <laughs> I try to do that because I find that my, my body is smarter than my brain. I've always known that. I think that is a human thing. Our bodies react even quicker than a brain does. Um, Cause like we try to intellectualize everything, right? But really and truly it's just instinct. And that's how I always try to um, form characters or research or, you know, I, I take it all the way down to animal base of just instinct. Right. So I build characters from there. So that, to me, that was Lacey. She was just all animal and who doesn't want to just watch somebody in behavior. I was amazed to find out that you shot it in just 15 days. Is that right? 
Crazy. Challenges that presents to you, and then uh, Olanuke. For me, uh, it, it it seems that maybe when you're working like that, that it's just got to be completely instinctual. You've just got to go with your gut. You do. You can, you have no time to really think about things, and nor should you. You shouldn't spend that time in your head and just enjoy um, interacting with the other actors, right? So it's it, and it's it's always about the other actor. It's never about you, because when you know you put it all on yourself, then it'll take that much longer to get through something because you're overthinking it. Uh, how can I? What's my angle? How can I look better? All of that is garbage, right? <laughs> it's just you're taking up everybody's time. Just enjoy the other person and reacting to the other person. And so then I just surrendered. And you know, I, I 15 days to do this and I was still doing another project in the middle of that. So I didn't have any time to waste, right? So, Cause I had to keep going from between two characters. Yeah, and she was getting her sleep like on the, on the bus or the truck. On or the truck, yeah, back. on the, the ride back and forth. That's where I slept. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Six hours each way, yeah. And Audrey, so 15 days. Uh, uh, yeah. What does that mean to you as a director, as a filmmaker? Oh, good old Canadian movie making. Uh -huh. uh, which is an upgrade <laughs> from Darken, which we had, we had uh, basically 13 and a half days. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. And it's really, you know, it's hard because you start off with a really ambitious script and there's fight sequences, there's special effects, there's, you know, all, just con lots of locations and location moves and things and, you know, a big, ca bigger cast. And um, I'm the kind of director that for me, I need to sit down and design every single scene. Um, I have these little Lego figures and I have my cam my phone that acts as a camera to help me like block and sh <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and so I like walking on set already knowing like how I'm gonna shoot this, the scene. Um, and I got brought on to this when they pivoted to it into She Never Died. It went pretty quickly. Like I think they called me, they were maybe, um, so we had three weeks of prep before shooting. So in prep, you're trying to find the locations and trying to get you know all the departments up and running and going and all that kind of stuff. And, um, I used those three weeks, so I was double dutying it already, like designing the film, finding the locations, getting the crew up and running. So I was double dutying it, and by the first day of principal photography, I was already exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had like 15 days of about 20 hour days uh, to do it. And just by the end, you're you're skinny, you're frail, <laughs> you have no idea what's happening anymore. Um, yeah. But you know what? It's it's really great experience. It's good training because you start to really have to figure out, okay, what's the heart of the scene? What do I need to get? And I already know how I've designed it. So if I've designed it with four four angle four different camera angles, how okay, we don't have any time. I need it to be one. So I'll how can I design putting in all four into the one? And so it's just really important to make your day every day because on 15 days you can't make it up. If it's raining, right. there's no, if you, and you don't shoot outside in the rain, I, you can't make it up. And so every day you're on the brink of like absolute failure or absolute success. <laughs> you, 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 you get skinny and frail by the end of it, but you end up with a great movie, like She Never Died, so. Yeah, uh, you gotta fight so for it. I, I am a fan, I'm a fan of the movie. It's on VOD right now, people can find it. Uh, one last question for both of you about uh, sort of a, I guess a pandemic related uh, thing. But um, this is, as we talked about earlier, a time of re-examination. A lot of us were sitting around, uh, you know, thinking about things maybe differently than we had before. What kind of movies do you think will come out of all of this? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Because, <laughs> I mean, I don't even know, to tell you the honest truth, because we have pandemic movies already. Contagion yeah. was one of the big, one of the yeah. highly watched movies on Netflix since this whole pandemic. So, I don't know. What else do you come up with? Like, what do you come up with? I was hearing that they're starting to film, like, virtual filming, like, virtual sets. And I was like, no, no, I will not be okay with this. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, you are no, because there's so many businesses that are starting right now, right? Online. Yeah. I mean, I, IG Live. I'm like, whoa, you've never seen it like that before. I know. I know. Right. And Audrey, are you cooking up any ideas while you're sitting? Oh here? yeah, I'm working every day. Yeah. Of, course you, <laughs> of course you are. Of course you are. Well, I was I was fortunate enough that um, I have a couple screenplays that that are pretty much all ready to go. And um, I was fortunate enough. I went my last trip to LA. By the time I and I went, I was pitching five meeting five, you know, sometimes six meetings a day. Yeah. And I, when I came back, they they were just closing all the borders and all the stuff. So I just made it back in. Right. And so now I'm in, I, it's kind of like, okay, well, I have a little bit of free time just to keep tweaking and making sure they're really good. Um, and the plan is to get the first one out in the next week or so. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I will keep my fingers crossed for you. I'm oh, envious you. of the of the food that you're eating. You're <laughs> I'm very, telling you. You're very lucky. I am. I really am. Okay. And I'm like, I'm, my body's all curvy. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both so much for doing this and spending some time with me at isolation studios so great to, to be able to talk to you guys so, oh it's I'm so good to talk to you too i'm sad it's ending the end is nice it's not every generation says not but every generation is wrong that's kind of different maybe we can make a train well, they were lots of fun, and so was their movie. You can find She Never Died anywhere that you legally download or rent movies, so iTunes, places like that. Uh, before we go, I just wanted to share a couple of things with you. Like so many of us, I've been spending just a little bit too much time on Twitter and Facebook, uh, killing time on social media, but I found a couple of cool memes that I wanted to share with you. First up, if you know me, or perhaps if you've been watching this show for a little while, uh, you'll know that I'm maybe the world's biggest David Bowie fan. And so those memes and, and social media posts tend to catch my eye a little bit. And I saw a really cool one the other day that takes the cover of my favorite album cover, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars, the greatest album ever made. We can debate that another time. And uh, makes a couple of changes to it couple of subtle changes that makes it perfectly timely for right now. Uh, so have a look at that. You can find it on the David Bowie official Instagram page or on my Instagram page at Richard Krause. Uh, also, I saw this and I thought they were really cool. So Lady Frankenstein is an artist who uh, creates whimsical creatures and these days, like so many other artists and creative people, face masks. Uh, the face masks that she has made here uh, suggest that she is a fan of the movie Alien and particularly of the creature, the face hugger. And so she's made these really startling masks. Now, they're very limited edition. It's just for Lady Frankenstein and her husband. I don't know, Frankenstein? I guess maybe he's Frankenstein. And uh, one other one that you'll be able to find on eBay, and you can bid on that one. Uh, if you're interested, check out the eBay page. Find Lady Frankenstein on Facebook. She's easy to find and have a look at some of her other really cool creations. Well, that's it for right now. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Stay healthy. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. And we'll talk to you again soon.